This book, Wisdom Walks, 40 Life Principles for a Significant and Meaningful Journey, beautifully, beautifully packaged, I must, say, must add, is written, co-written by uh, two men who have uh, a pretty uh, meaningful um, accountability relationship, I understand, from reading your book. Dan Britton and Jimmy Page. You're Jimmy, you're Dan. Welcome, fellas. Thank you. I, I, first of all, before we talk about the book, and you know what, this is going to be our offer for the whole month, so um, we'll be hearing a lot about it, but I'm really interested in you, the authors. How is it that you even kind of got together? Like, how did this happen? <laughs> well, it was about 22 years ago. You know, I was uh, on the campus of Virginia Tech down mm -hmm. in Blacksburg, Virginia, and uh, we invited Dan in as a speaker through the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. And uh, we were on campus there, and he came down, and, and I loved him. I mean, he came down and spoke the word, and, and I said, man, this is a guy that I need to get to know and, uh, and do life with. So we struck up a friendship, then I moved to uh, Northern Virginia, which is where he was home-based, mm -hmm. and uh, that's where it all began. Now, you were a professional lacrosse player. Yes. Now, is lacrosse a, a big sport in the U.S.? It is. It's uh, America's oldest sport. Yeah. The Iroquois Indians used to play it as a form of war games, yeah. and it's really significantly grown throughout the little leagues and the high school leagues. Like, it's officially yeah. Canada's yes. uh, 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 national sport, although yeah. everybody says hockey. Yeah. But you're right. It's, it's, it, it predates hockey by a long shot. Mm. Um, you got to be remarkably fit to play lacrosse. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, you're running <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And taking huge hits yeah. with oh, yeah. very little equipment. Yeah. War games, yeah. remember, it's yeah. war games. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and a stick that you can use to <laughs> well, yeah, you, inflict as a weapon. Harm. Yeah, you see these guys clubbing each yeah. other with these oh, sticks. Yeah. I'm saying, where's the penalty? Well, it, was, mean, it was great playing as a Christian. You knock them over, say, God bless you, and pick them right back up. <laughs> yeah, it, was, it, it was a beautiful game to now, play. Now, when you were playing, did you wear the full mask? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Which, which is good. Yeah, you I got, did you have I a got, leather helmet, or was it the heart? Yes, the original days. Yeah. How many years? Was it 15 years? I played professional professional for four years. Yeah. Uh, but with, you started long before that. Yeah, I've been playing lacrosse for 35 years. Oh, ah, okay. So you started as a very young yeah. lad. Yeah. I, yeah. My dad was an All-American at the Naval Academy mm -hmm. in college, and I had two older brothers, so I, I think I grew up with, in, the, in the cradle. I had a lacrosse stick you and did. lacrosse ball. Yeah. Sure. yeah. Do you miss it? I still coach uh -huh. and still involved in the game. Still yeah. coach uh, my girls and my boys' teams and, mm -hmm. and very actively involved in the game. Well, you know, I, uh, as a Canadian, I grew up playing uh, hockey, of course, and, uh, and football. Um, and one year our school introduced lacrosse. And so I thought, well, gee, this looks like a great game. It nearly killed me. I, <laughs> I, you know, I, I thought I was fit yeah. playing hockey, but oh, yeah. man, yeah. You, you talk about a demanding sport. Yeah, it's a great it's, game. It's, Jim, it's, Jimmy yeah. still, co he coaches yeah, coach his kids. Well, he got me into the game. And, uh, and in the Mid-Atlantic, in the Maryland, Virginia area, Big. lacrosse is huge. So you coach it even though you didn't play it? Easy now, yeah. Is, it, is that allowed? So, yes. So, so you're, 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 you're a theorist. Well, you know, I'm... <laughs> We've screwed him up. He's yeah, yeah. I, I understand line. the game now, and, yeah. and I went to a boot camp to really yeah. get to understand yeah. the game, and I love it. All, all of my kids, four kids, play lacrosse now. And tell me about Athletes in Action. Well, Athletes in Action is a great ministry. We work alongside of Athletes in Action. Fellowship of Christian Athletes and AIA are committed to... To working okay, with so you're sports. Your fellowship of Christian athletes. Yeah. yeah and I, so I'm, we, I, I'm sure everybody is confusing it all the time. Oh, yes. yes. Yeah. You're not the first yes. yeah. or the last. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, so, but we, we have a real good strategic partnership with Athletes mm -hmm. in Action. Yeah. AIA is a, is a great ministry. Mm -hmm. Fellowship of Christian Athletes has the same mission to reach coaches and athletes and use the platform of sports to have an impact for Christ. Yeah. yeah. And I'm sure kids are listening with uh, all full attention. Now, this book, how, how, did, how did the book emerge, uh, Jimmy? Uh, <laughs> Who wants to handle it? Well, uh, you know, for yeah, 20 years, we really did life together. And, yeah. and we discovered that if I was going to become everything that God made me to be, and, and if Dan was going to become everything God made him to be, that we would need to do life together. So for 20 years, literally, for the first probably four or five years, we were in a strict accountability relationship. Every Friday morning, 6 a.m., Dan and I and two other key guys Couple in our hours, life. Every Friday. Yeah, lots of coffee. Uh, but we would wrestle with the tough issues of life, and, and it, it, was, it was bare bones. I mean, we would lay our lives out mm -hmm. on the table, and we would challenge each other and say, hey, is that God's best for you? And then uh, as we kind of moved apart, moved across the country, we kept that, that relationship going. Yeah, and so it's, it's basically life on life. Yeah. Life on life, and, and that's the thing that we find is, is with Christians, we're both in full-time ministry with the Fellowship of Christian Athletes. You're around and, and you go to church, around ministry, doing a lot of great things, mm. but very few leads are intentional, engaging in relationships. Yeah. And this is the whole premise of the book. We say wisdom minus relationships equals nothing, yeah. but wisdom plus relationships equals influence. Yeah. 
Now, how do your wives factor into this? I, I mean, yeah. is your wife not an accountability partner? I think it's a different type of accountability partner. I think in any good marriage, I think there's a measure of accountability. You know, there, there's probably not a closer relationship on earth, but I, we have discovered that you really need a, a close male-to-male uh, -male relationship, female-to-female -female relationship, because you, you might be dealing with issues uh, beneath the surface that really need to be challenged in a different way. And so we discovered that, that having this accountability relationship outside of the marriage is one of the key areas or key things that we've been able to do to make the marriage better. Yeah. Now, we're talking about wisdom walks here, and, and, and I want to get a little overview of the book here in a moment, but uh, I'm trying to just kind of mine down a bit here and just yeah. see what's, what's behind it all. When it comes to guys and accountability, yeah. how, how big of a factor is sex in that accountability relationship? Uh, gender or sex? No, no, talking about your sexual <laughs> yeah. issues. Oh, it's yeah. huge. Like, like it seems huge. to me for guys, huge. this is a yeah. constant issue, right? Yeah. Yes. And, and so yes. be, being really open with a guy about some yeah. of your sexual challenges yeah. makes you really vulnerable. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. In fact, to be honest, early, early on in our accountability in our group, I think that was the one issue that surfaced, that actually Dan surfaced this issue. And we all kind of, our jaws hit the ground and we're like, you've got to be kidding. I, mean, I was out there on my own. Yeah. So as we started yeah. our accountability group, yeah. I was like, hey guys, I don't know if you struggle in this area, yeah. the thoughts and just, yeah. well, I need accountability and kind of threw it out on the table and yeah. it was silence. <laughs> yeah. It was We're like, hey, good for you, like, buddy. Yeah, that's <laughs> your problem. And I just said, hey, this is an issue. I need prayer. I need accountability. Yes. You guys got to ask these yes. questions. These are areas that I get tempted in. Got everything yeah. on the table. And that's one of the things we say often with even wisdom walks is you have a relationship enough to have that trust yeah. that you're discussing things that that Satan wants to keep quiet and, and away from anything, but bring it into the light and let God do a work. See, right. A guy takes a real risk when he talks about uh, sexual issues because yes. he's really giving his accountability partners power over him. I mean, it's yeah. like you're giving away something really, really intimate. Yeah. And you don't want guys to know what you're thinking or, or, or where you're tempted. You want to pretend yeah. like you're kind of above that oh, stuff. Oh, yeah. You, you want to put out this, this facade that you're yeah. better than you really are. Yeah. And the truth is that we know the stuff that's going on beneath the surface is the stuff that needs to come to the top. Yeah, and and so the the stuff that comes to the top, you know, I, um, I I read the read the whole book, of course. I always do mm -hmm. when I'm interviewing Fantastic. somebody. I don't want someone else to read it for me. Uh, and I'm thinking, so where you know, what what should I choose to kind of highlight? And I, you know, you, you you've covered so many things mm -hmm. here, uh, but the uh, one of the things that really struck me was your twentieth. Uh, what do you call these things? Uh, principles, life yes. principles. Yeah. Um, narrow the focus for greater life change. It seems we're living in a world where everybody is saying expand your focus. You're yes. saying narrow your focus. And I read what you said, but for our viewers, tell us what you're talking about here. Yeah. Well, yeah, num number 20 is just one word. And what we discovered, Jim, we a lot of times do so much. We have goals, we have objectives, yeah. new year resolutions. We, yeah. we, we put all this stuff on the table. 75% of the people that have new year resolutions, that have these great ambitions, after 30 days, they're not doing it anymore. Yeah. Falling apart. Just one word is picking a one word theme for the entire year. Yeah. Yeah. Like you can have other goals, other strategies, but, but just one word, narrow the focus down. Is there a theme, a thought? Maybe it's a, a fruit of the spirit. Maybe it's a person, mm -hmm. but just pick one theme, one word, narrow the focus down and let God do a great work through the power of that one word. Yeah. And give me an example of one word. Well, we've been doing this now for 15 years, probably, yeah. this one word idea. And I think because we had had so much failure with our New Year's resolutions that so we said, well, I can't make a list of 22 things. Let's yeah. get the, let's simplify this. We're Narrow simple guys. Yeah. So for instance, this year, Dan's word is pure. My word is life giving with a, with a hyphen. Yeah. That's a, yeah, yeah, two words. That's, it's two words he, together, he, he making it, it one. It's a hyphen. I got, it's, <laughs> so suspect. my word, what life giving. Was, what does that mean to you? Well, so in, you know, as we, as we look at all aspects of our life, you know, my marriage, am I speaking words of life into my marriage? Am I consuming food that is bringing life? Is that life-giving food? So am I taking care of the temple of the Holy Spirit in a way that honors you God? Mean no more junk food, Jimmy? 